Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, from God the Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message are the readings for today, but especially the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 2, verses 27 and 28. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Here ends our text. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, I have two questions for us to meditate on this evening. First, what are we doing here today? And second, where is everyone else? Both questions may or may not have easy answers. We may know exactly why we are here today, to keep the third commandment, which is remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. We might even remember the what does this mean from Luther's small catechism. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. But are we only here to keep the law? We are to keep God's law, and it is a command to remember the Sabbath day. So the statement made by some as an excuse to not be in worship regularly I don't have to go to church, is definitely wrong. God commands us to keep the Sabbath day holy. So we should remember the Sabbath day. That means we should remember God's word and gladly hear and learn what it tells us about God's grace in Jesus for us. So, does that mean all we have to do is show up once in a while when it's convenient for us? We don't really need to listen to the Word and take it to heart. Hearing what God has done for us, His grace in Christ Jesus, the Lord, we don't need to apply God's Word, both the law and the gospel, to ourselves and our Christian lives. We really don't need to then, in repentance, gratefully respond to God's grace. We don't need to participate in the liturgy with the responses, Lord have mercy. Or joyfully sing hymns as the psalm of the day, Psalm 81, reminds us, sing aloud, shout for joy, raise a song. We might even come to God's house, to His divine service, and complain. We might complain about the church about others, about the way things get done or don't get done, and about how we think it should be. We must ask for forgiveness. We should remember the Sabbath day and remember God's grace. But you know, complaining is nothing new for God's people. In the Old Testament reading from Numbers 11, the people complained about God. They complained about the food, the same food, over and over and over again as they wandered in the wilderness. They wanted to go back where they had a variety of food, back to Egypt, back to captivity back to slavery. They had forgotten 
what God had done for them. They had forgotten the deliverance from slavery by the almighty power of God. They had forgotten about the amazing and abundant grace, the undeserved riches given by the Lord God Almighty. They had forgotten all that God gave to them daily, all the undeserved gifts. Have we forgotten too? Have we forgotten God's mercy and love and grace? Have we forgotten what Jesus has done for us? We should remember the Sabbath day, and we should remember God's grace. Now, not all complaining is bad. Moses complains to God. And God gives Moses elders to assist in taking care of the demanding people. Notice the difference of complaining about God and to God. God wants to hear from us, his children. But complaining about God in his way and his will is pride-filled and wrong. As sinners, we have a difficult time not complaining about things, maybe even church things. Look, even Joshua complains to Moses, too, about things not being done the way he thought they should be. Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, stop them! Joshua didn't like it. They're doing it wrong. Things need to be done the way I think they should be. And Moses responds, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of God were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. We need to repent. We need to ask for forgiveness. We should remember the Sabbath day and remember God's grace. In the Gospel reading, we see the Pharisees, the church leaders, complaining about Jesus and his disciples breaking the Sabbath day laws. The Sabbath day laws that they had made. The Sabbath day laws that they had added to God's command, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. I'm sure glad that we don't do anything like that. We don't individually and personally make up how things need to be or add things according to our own thoughts and our own ways. Do you happen to still be thinking about my first question? What are we doing here today? Do you remember why we are here? Do you remember the purpose of God's house? Do you remember who is doing all the work in the divine service? Do you remember what Jesus has done for us all? We should remember the Sabbath day and remember God's grace. The Pharisees are upset and complained about Jesus. They're upset because Jesus and his disciples have broken the Sabbath day law of working. The Pharisees' interpretation of the law was that Jesus and his disciples were harvesting on the Sabbath, working as they picked heads of grain and threshed the grain. Jesus and his disciples were merely getting food to eat, not breaking the intended meaning of the Sabbath day law. Jesus clarifies God's purpose of creating the Sabbath day for mankind. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. God has given to us a day to rest, a day to worship Him, a day to remember all that God has done for us. The Sabbath day of rest is for us. 
but it is not for us to make it what we want it to be. A day to sleep, a day to shop, a day to spend on ourselves doing what we selfishly desire. A day to ignore our loving God and His Word. His Word. That's where we hear of the forgiveness of sins and life eternal through the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. Where we have rest in Jesus. We should remember the Sabbath day and remember God's grace. As sinners, as enemies of God, we deserve earthly and eternal punishment. We have complained about God. We have broken His laws. We need His mercy. Instead of getting what we deserve, our almighty and gracious God has freed us from the captivity of sin. He has provided all that we need for this body and life. He has freely given to us the gift of faith through his word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we might believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is God's grace. God has given faith forgiveness, and eternal life to us through Jesus. We should remember the Sabbath day, the day of rest and worship, the day of rest in Christ Jesus who has taken our sins upon himself that we might be saved and have eternal life with him. We should gladly come to his house and hear his mighty deeds for us in his word where he comes to us. We should remember God's grace in Christ Jesus. Did you get the answer to the first question? We are here today to hear and remember. We are here to hear of the mighty and awesome works of God the Father for us. We are here to hear of Christ Jesus, the Son, amazing and abundant love for us. We are here to hear of the Holy Spirit's power through the Word for us. So we are able to trust, to repent, and to remember the grace, mercy, and peace of God. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember God's grace. So now, is remembering the goodness of the Sabbath day and remembering the abundance of God's grace for us only? Should we keep this amazing gift hidden? My second question at the beginning was, where is everyone else? Do they not know? Have they not heard? How will we know why they are not here to hear of God's grace in Christ Jesus? knowing and remembering what God has done for us, leads us to respond by sharing God's grace in Jesus. The epistle reading states, For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. God's word His law and his gospel is not about us. It is about Jesus for us. And it is for us, as his servants, to proclaim to others. We must share why we remember the Sabbath day and why we remember God's grace. We must share Christ Jesus and the good news of forgiveness and sins and new life in him. That is what we are to share with others. We must share God's grace in Christ Jesus. We must tell others of God's amazing grace and love for all people as we ourselves remember 
all that God has done and continues to do for us. As Paul writes, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. God gives us temporary, frail, and unworthy people the gifts and the power to share the eternal, powerful, and holy good news of Jesus Christ. The power of the Sabbath is God's grace. The power of the Sabbath is rest in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, from sin, death, and the devil. Through and in Christ Jesus, we have rest and forgiveness and peace, now and eternally. By the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of our Heavenly Father, we remember the Sabbath day. We remember and share God's grace his Son, Christ Jesus, the Lord of the Sabbath. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.